I say learned before I say holy. Why? St. Teresa of Avila was once asked by a fledgling nun, Mother Superior Teresa, if you had to choose between a, a learned, educated priest and a holy priest to be your spiritual guide, to be your counselor, who would you go to? You know what Teresa of Avila said? A learned, educated priest over a holy priest. The little sister was shocked. She said, why? She said, because a holy priest will lead you in what he knows that leads you to holiness in his own holiness, his own way of attaining holiness. But because he may not be informed properly of the church's teachings, he may misguide you. He may be holy in his own personal life, but that doesn't mean he's going to lead you to the truth in all things, because he has to be educated to guide souls. Similarly, a person who's holy in his own life does not necessarily have the qualities to guide you in situations that he's not familiar with, like marriage, like discerning truth from false revelations, like the criteria that enable you to discern them and so forth. And this is where education comes in, and it's very important. So to their merit, it's healthy to be cautious. You don't want to just believe everybody. And this is something I want to pause on for a moment. We are now living in an internet world where everyone and their brother is creating their own blog and playing the role of the theologian. You have laymen, laywomen, putting out Catholic information on this mystic, that mystic, and they have zero credentials by the church or authorization. And you know what happens? And it's happening now. Several of these people they're promoting are declared false by bishops and even by the state. Some people are getting in trouble legally because they're making a profit illegally off of their messages and their messages are fake. It's all meant to bring in money. So be careful here. It's a, there is a killing to make in the field of religion with dishonest people. Now, I'm not condemning the dishonest people because only God can read their motives. Only God can see if they're genuinely misguided, poorly guided, or in it for the money. We don't, I don't know. But what I do know is that people who are not authorized by the church to guide these individuals and prom are promoting them do more damage than good. And some of them go so far as to say, well, it doesn't matter. We mix the good with the bad and we let you decide. That is dangerous. That's dangerous. To allow a lie to coexist with the truth is reckless spiritual guidance. You don't do that. Unfortunately, you have these blogs today. So I would discourage all of you from going to these sites led by unauthorized lay men and women promoting the latest message coming down the pike, the vast majority of which I can tell you as an authorized theologian are false. It's far more advantageous spiritually for you to go to something that is already acknowledged by the church as authentic. And if it isn't, go to a learned theologian who can inform you whether or not this has any merit of confidence. Because remember, we're dealing with your soul here, an immortal, beautiful pearl that God has created. And it demands the utmost attention, respect, and love. It should not be mixed with falsehoods. 